Hi everyone and welcome to another Hook Deck video. In this video, we're going to be taking an introduction into the Hook Deck API. As we all know, Hook Deck has a dashboard where you can do things like create connections, browse and filter events, and also define rule sets. Hook Deck also exposes an API whereby you can do all this programmatically. So you can trigger actions to create connections or fetch connections from CI CD processes or within your code. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to work with the Hook Deck API. We're going to see how to authenticate against the API and how to create a connection and fetch connections. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to pull up the Hook Deck website. I'm going to go to Firefox here where I have the website already opened. To access the API documentation, all you need to do is go to resources and just come down here to API reference. So we'll click on API reference. And as you can see, we get taken to the page where we have the Hook Deck RESTful API. And in this video, we're going to look at how to authenticate against the API, how to create a connection, and also how to fetch connections. The API documentation contains everything you need to perform similar operations that you will do on the dashboard. So let's get started. The first thing you need is your API key. For you to authenticate against the Hook Deck API, you need an API key. And that can be found on your dashboard. If you go to your dashboard, uh, you have to come to your account icon here and scroll down. You'll see workspace settings. When you click on workspace settings, you'll be taken to this page that I am on. Here you can see your API key as displayed here. You can copy that by clicking the copy icon at the right hand side of the API key. And there you have your API key. This is something that you need to keep a secret and make sure no one has access to it. But for this demo, I'm using a demo account and we can just get right into it. I'm going to be using Postman. So I'm going to bring up Postman to demonstrate everything that we're going to be doing today. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is authenticate. So I'm going to go to the API reference and go to the authentication section. Here you see that Hook Deck uses the basic authentication. And what you need to do is get your API key and pass this header, the authorization header. With this header, you pass basic space and your API key. So any request you're making to the Hook Deck API, you need to pass this header along with your API key. So I'm just going to test the authentication out by going to Postman. Postman has a very user-friendly interface to send HTTP requests against any API that you desire. So we're going to be sending a GET request and um, at the authorization section, I'm going to select basic auth. I'm going to select basic auth and I'm going to pass the API key. I already did that before, so I'm just going to clear that and do that once again. I'm going to pass the API key as the username. The password is empty. So this is how you pass the API key when you're using Postman. You pass it as a username. When you're using a programmatic HTTP client, just make sure that you pass this authorization header in this format. Authorization, then basic space, your API token. But for Postman, I can just select basic auth and pass it as the username. As specified here also, it says use basic authentication to authorize your request. The username is your API key and the password is blank. And that's what I'm doing right here. So we have the username and we have the password blank. So I'm just going to call this endpoint. There's an endpoint here that you can test. So I'm just going to call this endpoint that fetches events. Enter it into the URL field here, get request, and I'm just going to click send. As you can see, I have data returned. I don't have any events currently, so we just returned an empty array, but this already indicates that we have the API working, so that's good. The next thing we're going to do is create a connection. We're going to create a new connection. So I'm just going to go to, um, on the left hand side here, I'm going to click on webhook connections. There, we can do that from here, but I'm just going to go here so as to show you that you can always come here when you want to work with connections, want to work with sources, destinations, rule sets. You'll find the documentation for each and every one of these operations here. So, webhook connections, and I'm going to be creating a new connection. So, to create a new connection, I'm just going to click this link, create a webhook connection, click on that. And for this, I need to call this endpoint HTTPS double forward slash 
api.ookdeck.com slash connections. I need to send a post request to this endpoint. So I'm going to copy this endpoint and go to postman. Change this to post. I'm going to stick that endpoint in there. Then I need to send this request body. I need to send this request body that contains this, a source object and a destination object. So I'm just going to copy this. Go back to postman. Now ensure that these authorization parameters are still there. They are needed for every single request you make to, against the API. Else you will get an unauthorized error. So I'm just going to go to the body section of postman and click on raw. Once you use a raw JSON, I'm going to change the format from text to application JSON and just paste this in here. So Shopify alias is Shopify, my destination, the label, the alias and the endpoint for my destination. That's my backend API. So this URL in the destination object is going to be the endpoint for your backend API. Now I realized when I was trying to do this, I'm just going to fire this once and see what happens. So I'm getting an error here. Alias is required. I got this error when I was um, checking out the API and I realized that you need to add an alias at the top of this object. You have to add an alias as one of the root properties. So I'm just going to set that. I'm going to create an, a connection rather for Twilio. So I'm just going to write Twilio. Twilio. So I'm going to go with Twilio. That my alias, my label will also be Twilio. And an alias will be Twilio. Once again. So I think I'm just going to change this to Twilio lowercase 2. Make it alias be the same. Uh, for my destination label, just going to call that my endpoint. The alias my endpoint also. And I'm just going to put a dummy URL here. Let's say something like my site dot com forward slash webhook endpoint. Okay, webhook endpoint. Wouldn't matter anyway. So I'm just going to put a dummy endpoint here just to demonstrate creating a connection. Now I'm going to fire the request by clicking on send. And there you have it. A connection has been created. To pull it, pull this up. As you can see, details of the connection have, have been displayed down here in the request body. We have the ID, we have the alias, which is Twilio. We scroll down here, we see details about the destination. We have our URL, our label, my endpoint, my endpoint alias. We have the source also, which indicates that it is a Twilio webhook. When we scroll down, we see the default values for the rule set. I didn't specify anything for the rule set, so it just picks on the default value. And there we have our connection. We have successfully created a new connection on our OOKDEC account. The next thing we're going to do is fetch connections. We do it to fetch connections. So let's see how to do that. Retrieve all webhook connections. I click that. That requires a GET request to this endpoint. It's the same endpoint as the one we just used, but now we're firing a GET request against it. So I'm just going to Go back to postman, switch this to get, and that yeah, the body is cleared, so I don't I don't have to worry about the body. So I just switch this to get my authentication or my authorization parameters are still set, and fire the request. And with this, I have the request response. Let's see if I can pull this up once again. Not sure. Okay, but here as you can see, we have a count of four, meaning I have four connections. And inside this models array, you can see each connection object. You can collapse each one of them so that you can see that there are four of them. So we have four connections in this array. If I expand the first one, that's the Twilio, the one we just created. So I think this is ordered based on the time it was created. The second connection was for Stripe. I created that earlier. And I also have connections for Shopify. I think this is Shopify. Yeah, Shopify. This is for Shopify. And um, I have another one down here. I think this is also Shopify. Yeah, Shopify. So I have four connections. And if I go to the dashboard and click on connections, as you can see, we have the Twilio connection 
we have the stripe connection we have the shopify 2 and shopify 1 i created this once earlier two shopify connections one stripe connection and one twilio connection and these two the twilio and the stripe were created using the api while the first two were created using the dashboard and as you can see they're all here no difference everything works everything is fine so in this video we've been able to demonstrate how to use the hook deck api to perform operations within your hook deck account similar operations that you could have performed using the dashboard and if you come to the documentation here, like I said, you can see how to work with sources. You can retrieve all your sources. You can create a new source. The same with destinations. You can also configure rule sets. You can do this within your code on the fly to adapt to very peculiar situations. And the fact that you can do this programmatically opens up a lot more opportunities for using hook deck within your applications. So I encourage you to try out some of these endpoints and how they operate and get familiar with the API. That's all in this video. If you have found this video useful, I encourage you to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel to get more videos on how to get the best out of Ook Deck and how to use the tool the right way. Thank you and see you next time.